I've done it. Okay, away to go. Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Brother Neva. I'd just like to um, introduce you all to Jim. Say, uh, say hello, Jim. Hello, everyone. It's Jim here. Can you just put something in the questions box just to let us know that you can hear us okay and that you can see the slides? Excellent. Hi, John. Thanks for the quick response. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Ken. Excellent. Yeah, great. Stephen, Michael, Ian, Annie, Peter, um, Elizabeth, Sarah. All right, great. There's lots of you online. It's great to see you all. So, I think we should get started, Jim. Right. Thank you, and thanks for uh, signing in tonight. Uh, great to see you all. Uh, I'm going to be talking tonight, uh, slightly out of my usual area, uh, how to make £2,500 monthly cash flow from a two-bed flat without buying the property, without buying any furniture, without paying for a refurb, without any of your own money. That sounds amazing, doesn't it? I'm going to show you in the next 90 minutes how you can make £30,000 cash flow per year from a two-bedroom flat without having to do the cleaning or changing a bed. I'll show you how to use a simple six-step system to control the property for free. How to manage it with virtually none of your time. Furnish it to hotel standards for just £195 and make 30,000 a year cash flow. Why would you need to cash in now on the growing travel trend? Why should you listen to me? I'm one of the UK's largest landlords. I do commercial and residential HMOs. I'm an investor with a portfolio of, of over 147 HMOs, 920 tenants, and I am still growing. I've got 26 years experience in the business. I started in 1991. <clears throat> in the early days, I managed 20 HMOs and 18 single lets part-time. So I know it's all about how to run the business, how to systemize the business, and streamline the property business while jugg juggling a demanding full-time job and family. I've always looked at creative ways to make property cash flow, starting by using credit cards. And that's why I know that property stories that are too good to be true often are possible if you know how. A good year ago, by chance, I had a conversation with a friend who is also a landlord. And it made me to look into this only too good to be true opportunity. And that conversation is now giving me the opportunity to earn up to 120000 in annual cash flow. And tonight, I'm going to show you how to exactly do the same thing. However, I'll give you some special bonuses. Do you like bonuses? I'll give you a mind map which shows you how to find tired landlords because that's essential to be able to find the uh, landlords. And that's just as a thank you. No cost, no obligation. You get it at the end of the online training tonight. So you can get that. So let's have a look at this enormous pie, the £22.5 billion pound pie. The figures from the Office of National Statistics show there are over 37 million overseas visitors to the UK, and that's on an increase. That overseas residents spend over 22 billion on their visits to the UK, and again, this is on an increase. The areas that are most popular are London, Edinburgh, Manchester, and Birmingham, and they attract over a million stays from overseas visitors during 2016. The interesting how the figures break down. Nearly half the visits to London were for holidays, while on the other way around, more than half of the Birmingham visits were business. While Manchester was rather interesting. It had its visits evenly spread between holidays, business trips, and visiting friends and relatives. The management consultancy PricewaterhouseCoopers says we expect the UK sharing economy to expand by over 30% per year over the next decade. 
gener generating 140 billion pounds of transactions by year 2025. What is called peer-to-peer -peer accommodation, which we'll talk about as service accommodation, is now well established of the sharing areas of the economy. And it's expected that these types of accommodation will increase by over 30 billion by 2025. There's a growing trend for both foreign and domestic people to come to England. And the revenue from service accommodation is expected to rise by 30% a year. And remember, a rising tide lifts all boats. So if you want to profit from the growing trend, you need to act now. I'm going to show you how to profit from this unique opportunity without buying a house, without buying any furniture, without cleaning or changing the bed, while juggling a demanding full-time job. Do you think it's impossible? I'll show you how to turn a house or a flat into a mini hotel, how to build a team so you become a property entrepreneur and not a cleaner and chambermaid. I'll show you how to manage your property, fill it with furniture, and rent it by the night. The tax benefits of service accommodation are fantastic. It's a business and not investment income, which landlords have, including HMO landlords. You're now revered by the government as being an entrepreneur and not reviled for being a landlord. You can claim 100% mortgage relief. You avoid the 3% surcharge from buying property. You can get a grand for free. The first £1,000 of earnings does not have to be declared. You can claim capital allowances. You can claim entrepreneur's relief. All these are the advantages of being a business. You're moving from customers, not tenants. You're joining the hospitality industry, so you get paid in advance with credit cards, even if they book a year in advance. So you don't have to worry about bad debts. You will have to provide everything for your customer, including towels, ironing, ironing boards, <coughs> crockery, pots and pans, plates. However, you can set your own conditions in your terms and conditions. So you can get around customer expectations. And I'll tell you a story about this shortly. What you're doing is creating a home from home with the benefit of someone else servicing the accommodation for you. You're talking about customers, not tenants. Tenants have legal rights, not rights. And customers don't. So if you evict a tenant, it's a costly process. While evicting a customer, you just call 999. Customers cannot stay longer than they're paid for. And it's this chance meeting with a landlord and a networking event in Birmingham, that's where I am, that opened the door to this. He had told me he had given all his tenants notice to start a service accommodation business. I don't think I'd do that, and I wouldn't uh, encourage you to do anything like that. There's plenty of accommodation that you can get for free without having to evict your tenants who are at home in your property. So I would never dream of doing that. But he was so uh, hell-bent on doing it, that's what he did. He was renting a two-bed flat in Birmingham for 200 quid a night. The same flat would rent for £600 a month on an assured short-haul tenancy. Let's just think about that. He's getting 200 quid a night, which would work out at £6,000 a month if it was full all the time. As I'll explain later, it won't be full. But you don't have to have it that full to be far better off. All you need to do is have a tenant for three nights in a month to stand still and four nights in a month to make a profit. Isn't that something interesting? It's phenomenal the difference that what people will pay for a holiday accommodation or hotel type accommodation. As a 26-year-old property veteran, I've learned not to believe every story that I hear. However, I do know that if it's too good to be true, don't ignore it because property is rather like that. Some of the things that sound too good to be true are true. So don't dismiss it. 
as someone who's bought eight HMOs using credit cards, I know fairy tales can come true. And though I didn't think it was a fairy tale when I was <laughs> buying the properties with my credit cards in the early days, and my wife didn't think so either. She left me and took the cat. I don't half miss the cat. A quick look on sites like Airbnb and Booking.com give you the information to verify this. So you have a look here. You can see. Do it. Well, don't do it now because I'm speaking to you. But do it after I finish speaking to you. Look on your local website and see what's going on. What people are charging for accommodation. And it's enormous. There we are. £350 a night in the Birmingham city centre. 340 for apartments, again, Birmingham City Centre. And amazingly, £500 per night. Incredible, isn't it? So, if you're only making £200 a night, you're being fairly tame. So, does it really make money? That's what you want to know. Yes, an AST is a little bit of let and forget. In this part of the world, uh, the average AST tenant stays for years. Uh, but you only make, a, if you're lucky, a modest income. With short stay look bookings, you're always looking for the next customer. So it's actually a job you're creating for yourself. And you will not get 100% occupancy. But as I said to you before, if you can let a flat for 200 quid a night that you only get 600 quid a month for, all you have to do is let it for one night a week to be better off. The booking sites will show you how far in advance properties are booked. And this will give you an indication of occupancy levels. And we can show you how your occupancy level can affect your income. So if you uh, have an occupancy level of 50%, you'll be making a profit of nearly £2,000 a month. While if you only got 30% occupancy, it's only 750 while you're really in the clover at 80%. 80% is generally accepted the best you can do. I would budget uh, around about 60% occupancy uh, is a reasonable figure to look at for your occupancy. So this simple spreadsheet, which was created for me, showed me that I could get a high level of occupancy and income and the kind of money I could make. <coughs> You can get as much as £45,000 a year from a two-bed flat with only 80% occupancy. My experience says if you're getting occupancy levels below 50%, then you're doing something wrong. And anything above 80% doesn't really exist, other than for a very short period of time. And your break-even occupancy is well below 40%. So you'll still make money doing this. So this chance conversation made me realize there is an easy way to make money in property. The chance conversation made me realize that I was leaving money on the table. But before my enthusiasm got carried away, I started taking on new properties. I wanted to test the idea. As Warren Buffett says, never test the depth of a river with both feet. So I stuck a toe in the water. So to make a no-risk test, I've got over a thousand rooms. <laughs> Why don't I test letting rooms uh, in between lets? And there's always voids in my rooms. Now, bear in mind, this is not a good test. The service accommodation isn't rooms, really. It's for flats and houses. The whole concept is people want a home from home. If they want a room, they'd book into a hotel. But using rooms was a way of giving a little bit of a test. But you're far better off using a flat or a house because that's really where service accommodation stands in its own because people want uh, their own home to move into without having a hotel and all the restrictions they have when living in a hotel. Now, to me, this was a no-risk way of testing things out because anything I let was pure profit. Uh, or what I thought, uh, so I thought. Well, I'll talk about that in a minute. So I ran the service, service accommodation test between July and November. September was the busiest month. 
I produce an additional £1,630 in income from 12 bookings, which involved 92 nights stay, and I only used four of my rooms. All rooms were advertised a minimum stay of one night, and the average stay was, strange enough, over a week. Quite odd, that. And here's some of the pictures. Not as good as the service accommodation, the apartments where they're charging two to five hundred pounds a night, but you get the general idea. There's uh, always something for a budget: thirty quid a night, thirty-two quid a night. The August testing wasn't so good, strange enough, but that's not surprising. I don't think anyone would say where I am, which is north of Birmingham, is aptly named the Black Country. Uh, it could have a lot of potential because there's lots to see around here, but Unfortunately, the culture hasn't lended itself to developing the holiday in, uh, industry. So most of our stays were really business people. Uh, we had eight bookings, 118 nights, used the same four rooms. They're advertised for one night, but we got longer stays, this time almost two, two weeks average stay. So uh, you compare that to the town centre rooms that being advertised they get uh, more. <clears throat> but we got better in our advertising. You can see from the pictures, we have polished up our act uh, and showed uh, better rooms. And these are ones that uh, are being advertised by other people. It's important that you get some really good pictures. Our October testing was really quite down. We got £771. But you remember, this is for very little cost. It's additional income. How many would you would like uh, if you'd like uh, the best part of a thousand quid for extra a month just for making the effort of trying out serviced accommodation got eight bookings 65 nights used only three rooms uh, one night again the average stay was eight days and these are pictures of the advertisements we used uh, on the, the pictures that we used that so what lessons do we learn from all this most people stay longer than their initial bookings, it's strange, which caused me a few problems with my letting department uh, because generally we tend to let the better rooms uh, and they're the ones we could usually let quite easily to long-term lets. So this is why I decided you're probably better off using dedicated properties for this. The other strange thing is if you advertise honestly, people will still book. So you don't have to be all the fantastic frills that some of the cities said their apartments who charge the price give. Uh, we tried one as cheapest chips with no frills and our advertising. There we are, cheapest chips with no frills. Uh, 14 quid a night. Uh, the other one, self-contained studio for one or two, 30 quid a night. Uh, you have to put in your terms and conditions what you provide in your accommodation. Oh, that's what we thought. This states our legal obligation. But you're in a business, and remember, we're now dealing with customers. It's all very well saying we don't do this and we don't do that. If it's customers' expectation require it, you're going to have bad reviews. You don't want that. So we started off not providing tolls. Could be uh, something we uh, hadn't geared up to doing. And we got, uh, on one occasion, a, a customer phoned us up and said, I haven't brought any towels, can you help me out? It just so happens that we had been thinking about doing this anyway, and the person looking after my service accommodation had towels in his car. And talk about coincidences, he was driving down the end of the road at the time this call came in, which he dealt with. So he turned around dropped off the towels, and the customer gave us a glowing review saying, how fantastic, I pick up the phone, faster in a hotel, we get uh, towels delivered to us. So, uh, next time, we weren't in such an uh, easy opportunity, a uh, position with towels, when the customer phoned up, and he said, well, sorry, we don't supply towels. His comment was, but I booked this hotel, uh, this uh, <coughs> service accommodation, and when they asked for towels, they got them, and they got them within a few minutes. So why can't you give me the towels? At that point, <coughs> we gave up, and we now provide towels with all our serviced accommodation, 
when we do this. So it's an easier life, you give the customers what they want. Other lessons that we learned. We find that demand is much higher and people are more likely to book if they have the option to book for one night stay, an instant book. Uh, <coughs> we find that the auto check-in using case, uh, key safe works well. That's a little box with a um, digital number on it. Uh, you uh, press the number and the key safe opens. So you don't have to be there waiting for the customer to turn up. You just say, there's the address by the front door or usually we put it around the side out of the way so it's not obvious. Explain where the key safe is, they can get the keys, they can let themselves in and they have a pack in the room as you can expect the towels are there, tea, coffee as well as the house information pack. We give them the Wi-Fi codes so they can log onto the Wi-Fi, very important and we've learned that ideally we're better off giving uh, much more than we normally give when we do this. And our testing showed that, strangely enough, there's a high level of a, a demand for service accommodation, even in, and I don't want to be disrespectful to places like Wensbury and Bilston, but they're hardly the kind of places you'd expect service accommodation to work. But they work. They work well for me for HMOs, uh, and they also work for uh, service accommodation. Testing revealed that our customers' expectations, and we met these. So to avoid conflicts and problems with uh, my letting teams and with our tenants. So it was clear that we needed dedicated service accommodation properties. So that's what we started to do. We'd done the testing. Yes, it would work. So now we've got four dedicated two-bed houses. And I plan to have 15 by the end of the year. Imagine what kind of income I'll be getting from those. We've now got a dedicated service accommodation manager. And it's a new cash flow stream to my property business. Thank you for that uh, chance conversation that put me into it. And even though I tested using rooms, which is not the ideal thing to use, because remember what I said, service accommodation really is houses and flats. Uh, people want a room, they'll usually use a hotel. So as you've seen, uh, the price of housing and flats in Birmingham range from £75 to £700 a night. I'm not sure what the £700 flat, what type of occupancy it has there. Uh, probably fairly low, but you can check on the website, have a look at it. So to make £30,000 from a two-bed flat, you need to charge about £150 a night. This is the higher end of the price range, so you need to provide good quality accommodation and your occupancy level needs to be about 70 to 80 percent. The other important thing is to have good quality pictures, the right pricing strategy and get lots of growing glowing reviews. I'll show you how to do this. It's easily achieved if you know how to do it. Again, we'll show you how to make 30,000 uh, pounds out of your property. Looking at the different uh, methods you still make profit even if you have low occupancy, so you can't really go that far wrong in the experiment. But you do far better if you can tap into the market uh, and do it well. Can I so, just, uh, hello, Roland. Yes. We've got a question from Paul who says, do you also um, stock kitchen cupboards with small amount of groceries along with tea and coffee? Uh, no, we don't. We just give them tea and coffee. Uh, we don't give them any groceries. Sorry, yes, uh, even groceries. We give them a packet of biscuits, uh, toilet roll, milk, tea, sugar, coffee, toilet roll, biscuits. Anything else, Wayne? Uh, sorry, I wasn't oh. responding to the email question. Online. Right. Uh, yeah, we don't. I mean, some people do. Uh, but usually they charge extra for it. I mean, you, you could, this is a start. Uh, people... Once they get the customers in, start to look at other ways to add benefits uh, or what you'd call value to the product. So they will offer to go out and do the shopping for the uh, people at a fee. They even do the cleaning, dry cleaning. So people who are staying for long term can go away, leave the laundry, come back, have it all washed and ironed, ready for them. So you can provide all these additional services that people want as an extra. 
I'm trying to keep it simple. Let's do, and uh, when we started, it was uh, I think we kept it a little bit too simple. We find as you find out from the story about towels, we just thought, well, we'll take our room, offer the same service we give to our HMO tenants, and we found expe expectations didn't fit with that. And in order to get the reviews we wanted, we very quickly uh, changed. Does that answer your question, Paul? Yeah, that's great. Then that we've got one other. We've got actually we've got a few other questions. So, what kind of agreement do you need between you and the landlord? Ah, glad you asked that one. We'll uh, show you how you can get that. Uh, there's various types of agreements, but we use a management agreement, and I'll show you how you can get a copy of that from your landlord. The important thing is you've got to be upfront with your landlord. This is not some devious thing where you take the property and then start turning to service accommodation. Uh, you'll be surprised how many landlords, if you're upfront with them, are quite open to you using your property as you wish. Uh, I wouldn't use the word service accommodation because that confuses them. They don't know what it means. Just talk about corporate lets. That's a better way of dealing with it. But don't uh, be de uh, deceive people. Okay, great. Um, so we've got a question from Adam. Is asking about is there any restrictions on um, how long you can rent properties uh, on short term lets through sites like Airbnb? Um, so, specifically, is there a maximum of three months period in which you can rent a property? I think what Adam's getting at is London, where they've got the 90 day rule, where they say you can't let in any one year for more than 90 days. Uh, it's not an area I've got experience in. If you're in London, you may want to look further into that where people have got the experience of dealing with this. But the, uh, the news uh, I've heard is it's not that rigorously enforced. Uh, but yes, it is a rule uh, that is out there. But around the rest of the country, there is no limit. You can do it for as long or as short as you want. It's one of the strange things. I've written a book on this topic because I looked into the legalities of it. I'm a rather sad person and I want to check the, what goes on. Uh, so the way to research it was to write a book on it. One of the very good way of learning stuff. And I was just amazed that there doesn't seem to be any rules. Uh, it, there's no rule that says you can do it and there's no rule that says you can't do it. And the way our legal system works is you don't get rules, you can do whatever you want unless there's a rule against it. That's uh, English law in a nutshell. Unless there's a law against it, uh, you can do whatever you want. Answer your question, Adam? Yeah, that's great. So if we move on now, but guys, please keep the questions coming in and I'll make sure that Jim answers them when, we, uh, when there's an opportune time to stop. Fantastic, thanks. Right, so I have a simple six-step set, set, system. And this is the uh, system for going about setting up a portfolio of mini hotels without buying a house, without buying any furniture, without doing the cleaning or changing a bed. The first part is the economics. We've talked about that. How to find these properties, how to control it, how to furnish it, how to fill it. And then finally, the sixth one is to manage your team who are going to look after it for you. So let's look at the economics first. This is where you answer the following questions. Will service accommodation work for you? for you? How much money will you make? How much should you charge? Now you need to do this before sacrificing any of your precious time on doing this and it's easy to do. You'll know whether service accommodation will work in your area. How do you do it? Go on Airbnb. Type out the town or towns that you want to invest in. For example, I've looked at in Birmingham for a family of four, four adults and two children to see what the demand was. So you select on a property, click and check the date box. This will show you the available dates in the months ahead. So you can see what is available and the less availability, if these properties are booked, you can show it shows you there's a high demand. You can see pretty well whether a property, what bookings it has up until Christmas or beyond. 
so you can check on the booking so you have a look here uh, this one's at 230 pounds a night it's run by a chap called Bobby and you can see in June uh, that he's booked for when is he booked the 10th of June the 14th and 15th of June and the 30th of June he's got a two nights uh, minimum stay and you've got the other one and you can see again when you can book what days are available uh, on this and then you've got 125 pounds a night this one's doing a lot more bookings uh, this is Alex I'm looking at and was it say here uh, he's booked 18 19th and then from the uh, 21st 24th he's got a couple of days 25th and 26th uh, but he's booked the 27th sorry he can't stay there tonight he is fully booked up until the 31st and then you can move down and you can see what he's got in August September and October you follow the idea so you can see what kind of demand there is so I looked at three different properties a one bed flat for 230 pounds a two bed flat for 125 it seems a bit strange three bed for flat for 150 there's all kinds of prices uh, out there the two bed flat which is only 125 is booked all the way to December with half the months already booked in September so what makes the difference well I'll look at that and see which is booking what the prices are uh, and quality pictures you need to be fairly numerous on this because is it better to charge 125 pounds a night for your flat uh, and have it fully booked or only 700 pounds a night for your flat and only have it booked for a small fraction of the time one might actually work out far more cost uh, profitable by charging more and doing less you might be better off and the reviews make a lot of difference people are much more confident they get a lot of five-star reviews people look at the reviews and it's sometimes more uh, important than the product description so this is why we learn very quickly we've got to give what the tenants want otherwise they complain and we've got a system which will show you how to get reviews from 75% of your clients uh, it's important <clears throat> so with very little uh, time less than an hour you'll know what the demand is likely to, like to be in your area the prices you can charge the quality of your competition and how you can replace your salary with just one automated mini hotel so the pricing is so important and to make the most profit it's not necessarily the highest price it's the uh, balance of occupancy and price uh, you've got to charge a competitive price to get the click the customers will assess your pop, uh, property from the uh, quality of the pictures in your room the descriptions and your reviews and the other important thing is to try and keep what we call the headline charge low so if you say you only charge 125 pounds a night but then you put an extra cleaning charge of 20 pounds at the end which it goes if they stay for a night it's 20 pounds if they stay for a week it's still 20 pounds you put in a deposit uh, an additional charge per person so you say right up to two people an additional person is 20 pounds and you may make a booking charge so say if you charge 20 pounds for the cleaning additional person and a booking charge this day two nights you would make yourself an extra 30 quid a night by doing this but you get the people to click in because they look at you and say ah this is 125 as opposed to 155 pounds a night Do you get the idea it's the way you uh, position yourself that's important right how do you find the properties that's what you're probably asking me and it's much easier than you think uh, there's a lot of what we call struggling landlords out there everyone likes to buy property they've gone to these posh shows and all the rest of it being sold the idea of being a landlord and then they find the reality is not quite what they make out so getting the right property which is often a high priced overpriced apartment flat in the town center which look very sexy but don't let very well because they tend to be expensive so the landlords tend to be struggling 
to do this. So how do you find these struggling landlords? They turn up to uh, network meetings, letting agents. The letting agent will uh, advertise the property to let. They're having difficulty letting it. You can get this. By learning some, some simple techniques with dealing with letting agents, you can find that they will give you the properties on a long-term let. Look at Spare Room and Gumtree and Easy Roommate, where they're advertising themselves. Facebook ads and Facebook groups all identify the properties. So you can find and go direct to the landlord who's advertising their own property and you give them the uh, information they want to hear, which is, would they like a long-term guaranteed rent to quality tenants, corporate tenants, who are going to look after their property? They'd love to give up uh, doing it themselves and hand the property to you. So what's the perfect service accommodation properties? One and two bedroom houses or flats. These are properties that will not work as HMOs. They make it, it makes it easier for you to persuade struggling landlords who are likely to see the only option is selling. And with the changes to the tax rules, a lot of landlords uh, are deciding to uh, sell up. It's, uh, they're very easily put off and upset. So you can help them. And I'll show you, tell you a bit more about that later, how you've got the ideal uh, sales pitch to deal with landlords who are selling because of George Osborne's change to the tax rules. It's important you don't waste any time looking at properties uh, that are not suitable. You know what you're looking for and you'll find it. You can persuade the struggling landlords without too much effort to let you manage their property. It's easier than you think when you have an irresistible offer. So, why should you rather control a property rather than buy it? Well, it's the speed in which you can acquire property. You can take control of a property in a night. It takes months to buy. You don't need any deposits. Most buy to lets want 20 to 30% deposit on the purchase price. With a landlord, you can often acquire the property without a deposit. You may be able to get a delayed rent period. So, what is your irresistible offer here? You can save the landlord because they're letting to you as a corporate let. That is not a residential let. They're able to take advantage of the mortgage interest relief that Osborne took out for residential lettings. So that's the saving of 25% in tax this year. It will go up to 50% in 2018, 75% in 2019, and to 100% of the mortgage, uh, where they are restricting the uh, tax relief on mortgage interest to basic rate tax. Now a landlord can still claim 100% mortgage relief on there. And you can give them a guaranteed whatever time period you want. I always think seven years, just slightly less than seven years is good because you don't have to register it. It's just a little quirk on the legal points. But a long-term let, you've got the security, you know where you are. And you'll assure them you'll keep the property in immaculate condition. Why? Because you have to, because of the kind of clients you have. So it's going to have to be good. Uh, and the sites, Airbnb and Booking.com, offer insurance. But you can also get your own insurance. It's not that expensive for using service accommodation. You know, look, know where to look. We'll show you. You can get the insurance. So you've got two le levels of insurance. I've done this over 42 times. I've got 42 properties that I control rather than I have bought. It's a very easy way to acquire properties. Uh, one is on a 125 year lease. So that's going to cover me. So I own it for the rest of my life and my children's lives. So you can do it whatever you want. In every case, the landlord is desperate to need to manage their property because they wanted a guaranteed passive income. Everyone likes money for no effort. And running it themselves was causing a problem. We, I maintained the property for them. They had had the properties damaged by the tenants who couldn't really care about what they're looking at. I could give them the instant solution by solving the problem on the very same day 
and take over their property so they could get rid of it quickly. And they've got one point of contact to deal with. They've got me, so they should have any concerns. I will contact them. And uh, they can contact me, should I say, rather than have questions. Uh, I've got some questions there, I believe, uh, Wayne, to ask. Sorry, what are those questions? Okay, so Jim, do you need a license for your mini hotel as I need it for a ho as you would for a HMO? I think that question is. Do you need a license for this apartment, or mm -hmm. where you might need it for a HMO? Right. Thanks for that, Wayne. Uh, who's this? Tamara. Thanks for the question, Tamara. No, you don't need licensing. Uh, service accommodation isn't an HMO. So what Tamara's uh, hinting at is the licensing of three-story HMOs doesn't apply to service accommodation. Strange enough, very few of the rules that apply to HMOs uh, apply to service accommodation. It's far less regulated than HMOs, so you don't like legislation. So thanks very much uh, on that one. Shall we move on? Uh, one more then. Okay, fine. Do you need to pay VAT on this service, or do you want to leave that until later? I think you're going to discuss VAT. No, I wasn't, but I will. I'm happy to uh, talk about anything you want to talk about. Yes, it's a business. Now, you probably know that with a business, you have to charge VAT. But only when your turnover exceeds £85,000 a year. So you, I wouldn't worry about it to start. Don't bog yourself down with too much detail. Uh, when you're getting to a turnover of over, uh, what's that, about £1,500 a, a, a week, then start worrying about that. So, uh, moving on then, what you're doing here, you with service accommodation, you're managing, you're not subletting. Uh, with this, you're managing the property for the landlord. And a management contract is very different, different from an AST. Uh, and we'll give you uh, a copy of our management contract if you decide to work with us further. So you've got the contract. What we do is, if you want to work with us, we like you to hit the ground running and have everything you need. You can replace your salary with one property. So if you like the sound of what we've covered so far, and you can see running your own mini hotel will replace the salary with just one property, and how you can build a portfolio of six mini hotels within 12 months without buying a house, without buying any furniture, that's amazing as well, Without doing the cleaning or changing a bed, you'll, you wish to learn my simple six-step system in more detail than we can cover tonight in the 90 minutes we have together, then please let me tell you about my service accommodation masterclass. Now this is a two-day course revealing step-by-step step the process to control property for free and make over two and a half thousand per month per property by managing it as a mini hotel without having to do the cleaning or changing the bed. This course is split down into six sections that we've already talked about tonight. The economics, how to find it, how to control the property, how to furnish it, how to fill it, and last of all, how to manage your teams. The same as we're talking about tonight. I'll give you all the templates and checklists and systems that I use to enable you to find struggling landlords, how to control the property for a fee, how to refurbish and furnish your property for just £195. Yes, that's it. That's all we need to put in new, high-quality furniture into the property. There's a way of doing it. We'll show you how. How to advertise your property on multiple booking sites, how to build your teams, how to train your teams. And also, the all-important, how to get a flood of glowing reviews. Are you interested in that? The contracts in itself save you over £3,000 in legal fees. The management contract, if you've got it made up, uh, I doubt you'd get it done for less than one and a half thousand. I've known people to spend thousands on it. I just had a contract drawn up because uh, uh, one of my partners insisted on it. It cost me the best part of six grand in legal fees. Your guest terms and conditions. Again, get those watertight. Save yourself one and a half thousand in legal fees. So you want to know what's the investment for this? 
Now, until recently, the only way of joining was to join my 100K club. This is a 12-month mentorship program which cost over £6,000 per annum. So you can see the two-day course, which just specializes in service accommodation, unlike the uh, 100K club, which deals with many aspects of property, you can see a, it's a bargain for only £1,997. There's no VAT on this. And you can see how you can make this back with just one month's cash flow. That's all. To learn how to do this, it repays itself within a month. You may want to know, how do you furnish it? Yes, Roland. Before we go on, can we just um, answer a couple of questions? Sure. So, we've got one uh, which is, do you get exemptions on council tax with serviced accommodation? Oh, that's an interesting one. Uh, I don't like this, but uh, I feel a bit uneasy about it. If you only got one property, because you're renting it as a business, you've got to remember this is a business, so though you're taking a residential property, you'll be using it as a business and operating it as a business, so you don't pay council tax, you pay business rates. Uh, and if you've got business, uh, you can, you're entitled to what's called small business rates relief. So if you've got uh, an ordinary house, the amount of business rates you pay on that would be very little, uh, and therefore you're exempt. So there's people who have started up service accommodation with a few properties who've got all their council tax back and didn't have to pay business rates because they're exempt. Nice. Better, isn't it? Yeah, nice. So um, somebody's asked, do you rent unfurnished flats? No, we don't. We're going to talk to you about furnishing them in, uh, in just a sec. Um, so more questions about furniture and towels, which we're going to go on to. Um, are you focusing only on flats or houses as well? What is the difference uh, between them in terms of strategy? Uh, uh, flats, uh, most people who do service accommodation do flats. There's no reason why you can't do houses, though you do have a little bit more hassle with them because you've got to look after the garden, but it does give parking and uh, I suppose a garden for your clients. It doesn't matter, it's the quality that's important. So you've got a new house, that would probably let probably better in the flat. But it depends on where it is. People often want town centres because they're going to the theatre or something like that. Well, houses tend to be more in the uh, suburbs, so it won't work so well. Or may not. It doesn't matter. Whatever you got, go for it. Test it out. Find if it works. If it doesn't work, move on and try something else. Great. Okay. Perfect. Let's move on. Right. So furnish it. You need to create a home from home. That's the whole idea of serviced accommodation, the whole concept. People want to be able to walk into a property, find everything there. Uh, I'm just going back to Adam, he asked, do you provide groceries? Uh, with the houses, we do actually provide uh, a, a complimentary bottle of wine. Just makes it look good. A couple of glasses, bottle of wine there uh, for your guest. Uh, just uh, touch it off. Doesn't have to be that expensive. You, mean to, you need to have a full spec kitchen uh, <clears throat> so that uh, your guests can cook a meal if they want to uh, and everything's there, pots and pans, uh, <coughs> plates, etc. Cutlery. A dishwasher, we, we fit dishwashers in there so they don't have to wash up uh, but though you usually find that a lot of people leave the washing up for the cleaners. The towels are an absolute must just as uh, we talked about before, and fast Wi-Fi is now an essential. And a little added bonus, <laughs> which goes down well, is Netflix. Uh, the extra cost, that, that cost, which is very little, is very much appreciated. So you want to make it hands-free management? Try and do it as such. Um, once you get established, they are rather expensive. You can move into programmable electric locks, which work on the Wi-Fi. So you text the code to your uh, customer <coughs> or email it, and you can don't have to worry about keys because the lock works electronically. 
and you can let them in. If they forget the code, you can remotely set it. Uh, a lot of people, if we find that when you're using electronic stuff, uh, you're far better off just saying to the person, what's your date of birth? And doing that is the code. And after they check out, you don't have to go to the property again. You can change the code <coughs> remotely. Just have to make sure your cleaners know what the code is, so they do it. Again, you text the code to the cleaners. How do you get high quality furnishes on £195? I bet you've been dying to ask that question. <coughs> so you've got to uh, furnish it to uh, um, hotel standards, and you appreciate that cash is king in all businesses. So how can you uh, furnish your property to protect your cash flow? You lease it. You don't go out and spend 30 grand on a new car if you want to go yourself an Audi or whatever or 80 grand on a Porsche you lease it for 500 or 300 pounds a month and you can do the same with furniture some enterprising businesses have set up a way of you acquiring property by leasing it so why would you do that it saves on your cash flow allows you to have faster growth <coughs> and there's no secret in it there's a company called Landlord Smart who provide the leasing of furniture. And at the end of the term of three years, you can, by paying an extra couple of payments, have the uh, buy it from the uh, company. If you're still running HMOs or uh, ASTs at the time, you might use it to put into your less salubrious properties. How do you fill it? How do you make sure you get the highest possible occupancy rates um, so that you get the best return? Airbnb and Booking.com are the biggest, but they're not the only sites available. The big advantage of Airbnb is you can set it up within minutes. Booking.com can take several weeks because they'll want someone from Booking.com to come out and look at the property. So it could take you two weeks to six weeks to get started. But you can get started with Airbnb, Airbnb straight away. However, it's generally accepted in the business that Booking.com give you much more bookings, so it's worth taking the time for the initial setup. Uh, remember, when we did our original test, <coughs> we didn't bother with Booking.com. We did it all on Airbnb. So you can see that... <coughs> Uh, we didn't uh, make the ideal uh, opportunities there. Be careful. Double booking can cost you dearly because you'll have to pay um, a penalty. You have to pay if you can't provide your uh, tenants with accommodation. You're, if you're double booked, then you'll have to pay for the tenants to stay somewhere else free of charge. So there's a way around this. <clears throat> you can get what's called travel manager sof software which makes sure that you don't double book. You're managing your teams. How do we do this? Now, running a hotel is a labor-intensive business. So if you want to become a property entrepreneur, if you want a property to give you a better quality of life, then you need to build a team. Without a team, you'll become the cleaner and chambermaid and handyman. Nothing wrong with that. I like to get my hands dirty at times. Uh, but most people, it's not quite their dream. It's whatever you like. <clears throat> with a team, you become a property entrepreneur with a business team running things for you. A business that runs without you runs on systems. And McDonald's is one of the best examples of this. They have taken standardization to the po highest possible level. They create systems for every part of the business. So it's difficult uh, <clears throat> to uh, develop this. So don't bother, just use mine. So you don't have to create your own systems. I've already devised them for you. Built to sell. A business, once it's built up and running, and it's got a track record of two or three years, you can sell this. And generally businesses are sold at somewhere around about five to ten times their profit. So if you manage 12 properties, and you have a profit of £180,000, and you can sell that for 10 times its profit, you could, in two or three years, sell that business for 1.8 million. It's a business. 
sell it on. So you can see, not only can you save uh, your, sa uh, your salary with just one property, if you like what I've said to you tonight, the sound of what we covered, we can show you how running just one mini hotel will save your salary with just one property, how you can build a portfolio of six or more within 12 months without buying a house, without buying any furniture, without doing the cleaning, without changing a bed, and you'd like to learn how to use my simple six-step system in more detail than we can cover tonight in the 90 minutes, then please let me tell you about the Service Accommodation Masterclass. This is a two-day course revealing the step-by-step -step process to control property for free and to make two and a half thousand pounds a month by managing as a mini hotel without doing the cleaning or the work. The course is broken down to six sections. <clears throat> the economics, how to find the property, how to control it, how to furnish it, how to fill it, how to manage it. These are the things we've talked about tonight. We give you all the te templates and checklists that you would want. How to find struggling landlords, how you uh, to control the property from the landlord by paying them a fee, how to refurbish the property for just £195, how to advertise your property on multiple booking sites, how to build your team, how to train your team, and how to get the flood of glowing reviews that you need. We'll also give you, on the two-day course, the management contract is going to save you well over one and a half thousand in legal fees, and the terms, uh, guest terms and conditions, which will save you uh, again about one and a half thousand in legal fees. So, what will this masterclass do for you? It's the fastest, easiest, and most accurate way to test demand in your area. So you know before you start off, before you invest any money or time, whether it's going to work for you. How to maximize your profits with a perfect pricing strategy. You'll see how you can increase your room prices per night without increasing your advertised prices. <clears throat> By using my crystal ball spreadsheet, you'll see how much money you'll make from each property at bad, mediocre, or good, or even exceptional accommodation levels. You can build your service accommodation portfolio at the speed of your ambition when you know the seven places to find tired landlords. So, what else will the masterclass do for you? Enable you to make quick, confident decisions when you know the exact property you're looking for and the maximum rent you can play. So you know how to make 30 grand a year from a single property. Learn the negotiation secrets from a landlord, that's myself, who has got 42 properties that are controlled rather than owned. They're rented, in other words. I didn't have to buy them. I picked them up, in effect, for free. And I'm able to let them out to other people. What I said to them, to make them give me the keys, and even me, thank me for taking over their property. We'll show you how to furnish a two-bed flat to wholesale standards for just £195, and you don't have to steal the furniture or use second-hand furniture. And skip months of frustration by using my proven advertising template to enjoy consistent bookings and predictable income. I'll show you how you not to, will not lose money by double booking sites, on your property because they're listed on a number of sites by using uh, the magic software. How do you get a flow of glowing reviews from over 75% of your guests with my proven email sequence? All you need to do is just personalize your name and the uh, customer's name and it's good to go. <clears throat> when you should be remove your listings, we'll show you that sometimes it's best not to list your properties so that later on once the property in your area has all been uh, sucked up and used you can go into the market and charge a lot more as much as 10 times what you normally charge for your property uh, because there's a shortage and uh, it's what the hotels do when there's high demand they put the cost of their rent up you can do the same and make a mega payday out of this. How to build a systemized business just like McDonald's from day one using my systems which allows you the business to run. 
Also tonight, I'm going to give you three free bonuses valued at £865. The first bonus is to spend a day or a week with my service accommodation manager to see how we do this. Would you like that? Would you like to spend time going around with my service accommodation manager, see how we do the bookings, see how we manage the staff, see what our property looks like? The second bonus is a, th a three-hour roundtable mentorship session in my office in Wensley before joining my 100k club members for an afternoon of work networking and brainstorming. And the third bonus we'll give you is three any time follow-up calls with myself to review the number of, uh, on your deals, how to help you if you've run into problems uh, and any challenges you have. Now this is a very limited bonus uh, because it takes so much of our time we can only give it to the first 10 buyers only. Only the first 10 buyers only can we give this to because of the time it takes to provide this. So why do you need the courses and the bonuses? Property education only becomes value when you use it, when you take action. The purpose of the Masterclass and any the three time follow up calls is to help you succeed faster. That's why it's a month after the course. You'll have time to absorb the new knowledge, take action, you'll come to the mastermind with some experience to share. If your experiences are that I can't find any struggling landlords, by the time you leave, you'll have specific solutions to doing this. Plus, you can spend a day or a week shadowing my service accommodation manager. My job is not to teach you, but to help you get results. Results are the only thing that matters at the end of the day. There's a big difference between knowing the path and walking the path. It is difference between transforming the quality of your life through property or remaining exactly where you are right now. Same job, same pension situation, same financial worries, same frustration. My job does not end when I show you how to use the six-step system to build a portfolio of mini hotels without buying a house, without buying any furniture, without doing any cleaning or changing a bed. That's when my job actually starts. Because my job is to help you get results. My job is to help you change your life. That's why I'm including this limited bonus. So, what is the investment? Up until, up until Recently, the only way to learn the secrets of my service to accommodation was to join my 100k 12 month mentorship program, which costs £60,000. The two day course plus the bonuses, which are valued at £865, remember those three free bonuses, is a bargain at just £1,997. Mere £1,997. And as I said, you can make this back with just one month's cash flow. However, I'm making a special limited time offer for you. If you're happy to share your service accommodation success with others in the form of a written or video testimonial, <coughs> then I'll reduce the cost of the course by a thousand pounds. This is a time limited offer and it only applies until this Friday, the 30th of June. So to buy the service accommodation masterclass, which is on the 15th and 16th of July in my offices near Birmingham at a discount price of £997 plus the bonuses, just click below. If you cannot make the 15th and 16th of July, we'll be running one after the summer, but you can still take advantage of this special offer if you book tonight. So if you can't make it on the 15th and 16th of July, provided you book tonight, or before the 30th of June, you can still have advantage of this time-limited special offer. It will not be continuing after the summer. There's the. I'm, I'm putting the um, the link to um, to to join the masterclass in the in the in the questions box, so you'll be able to just copy and paste that into your browser if you. Um, if you want to join. Okay. So Ken has asked, will you get, uh, can they get a, um, 
a copy of the slides. Yes, we're going to give you that in a minute. Um, so someone's asked, I'd like to book, but um, do you only do we only do them on weekends. Any solution? Yes, the courses are always on the weekend, unfortunately. Um, and do you get a discount if you have two people? Yes, if you have two people, the second person comes for half price. So it's not two tight. It's not um, two uh, two thousand pounds for two tickets. It'll be fifteen hundred. Okay, Ron. <coughs> we carry on. Yeah, that's great. It's better. I give you a 12 months, 100% money back guarantee. You can buy with confidence because of this 12 month, 100% money back guarantee. If you follow my 12 month action plan and don't take on two flats that you successfully manage as service accommodation within a year, then I'll give you all your money back, no forms to fill out, no hard feeling, no problems at all. This guarantee is designed to earn the trust of committed property investors. It's not to attract get rich quick dreamers. It's not for whiners that are too busy to take consistent action in their property business. It's not for investors that don't want me or want me to do the work for them. It's for the people who are prepared to do the work themselves. It's, it's not for people too afraid to get out of their comfort zone and try something new. Are you a buy to let landlord who wants to make some real cash flow from property for a change? Are you an HMO landlord who wants to build your portfolio faster? Are you new to property and looking for a proven way to replace your salary with a property cash flow in just one deal? Do you want to make a recurring property cash flow without tenants? Do you want to silence the doubters with success? Service Accommodation Masterclass is designed specifically for the ambitious property investors who want to become financially free within a year. You don't need experience, you don't need mountains of cash, in fact you don't need any money at all. You don't need to quit your job, you just need the desire to have a better quality of life. If you possess that fire in the belly, then I'd love to give you the proven systems to manage the properties as mini hotels without buying any furniture, without doing the cleaning, without changing a bed. To book a seat on the Service Accommodation Masterclass on the 15th and 16th of July in my office in, near Wensbury in Birmingham. If you're in from London, that's only about an hour and 10 minutes on the Virgin train from London to Birmingham and about another 20 minutes to Wensbury. You can book the course for £97, not for the £1,997, a special discount. To grab the three bonus uh, bonuses which are worth £865, to book a seat at no risk to you because you are covered by my 12 month 100% money back guarantee, just click the link below. I'll stop there so you've got time to click the link. Is it on and it's ready to go, Roland? Yeah, let me just post it again. Thank you. The questions box. So that's in there again. So that, yeah, you can just copy and paste that into a browser. Done. Yeah, that's done. Someone's asked, what are the dates after July? We haven't arranged them yet. Uh, they'll be uh, late in September. We don't run courses generally in August, uh, so it'll be September, uh, late September. Right. So, what difference is this going to make? <clears throat> so, what difference will £997 make to your life? Seriously, will gaining or losing a grand really make a difference to your life? This time next year, you'll be thinking about the money. What difference will a two-bed flat managed with service accommodation that gives you 30000 a year or more make to the quality of your life? Will it give you better holidays? Will it enable you to have multiple holidays a year? I think so. You'll have a few of those. 
What difference will a portfolio of six managed flats make to your life? An additional 180,000 a year. Will that give you a car of your dreams? Will you still be working in a full-time job? Will that pay for your daughter's wedding? Or help your kids get on the property ladder or send them to school? What happens if you, if you can't build a portfolio at six properties in a year? Let's say it takes two years instead of one. Would you be happy with an extra 90,000 in your first year? Would that give you the choices and freedoms that you want in life? Are you willing to risk £997 a day to get your hands on a system that will give you financial abundance within two years without buying a house, without buying any furniture, without changing a bed, without having to quit your full-time job and starting with none of your own money? I know that anyone who takes action with my proven system will get stunning results, but you don't yet. That's why I'm giving a 12 months, 100% money back guarantee. Let me help you replace your salary with just one property deal. Tonight I showed you how to create this six step system. Tonight I showed you how to use the six step system. Was there anything that we covered you thought was impossible? Let us know. With the support of a property expert on speed dial, don't you think you could set up a service accommodation property without any of your own money. I know you can. It's my hope that you say yes tonight. So you can start using property cash flow to improve the quality of life. Don't you owe it to yourself to give this a try. To learn those secrets at no risk to you because you are covered by my 12 months 100% money back guarantee. To book your seat on the Service Accommodation Masterclass on the 15th and 16th of July in my office in Wensbury, that's near Birmingham, it's by Junction 6 of the M6, sorry, Junction 9 of the M6, I think, pardon. M6 motorway, Junction 9, it's a mile away from there, it's about an hour and 10 minutes to Birmingham on a Virgin Train from New London, Euston, and about 20 minutes from uh, Birmingham. To book on the course, it's just £997. And to grab your three free bonuses tonight, if you're one of the first ten, which is worth £865, there is the website to join. As a thank you, as promised, even if you don't decide to go ahead tonight, you can still have How to Find Struggling Landlords. That's the website. If you tap that in, Roland is it up so they can get it. That is for free. That's just for thank you for listening tonight to take the opportunity to become financially independent. I hope you do make the choice, but this is my thank you for listening. Yeah, I've just posted that into the um, into the uh, questions box, so they'll be able to copy the link from there. Shout when you've done it, please. Yeah, it's done. I've done it. Hi, Sarah. Thank you. Sarah, just to say thanks for booking. I'm just sending you an email now about booking the September course. So uh, thanks very much. If you want a copy of tonight's slides, there they are. Roland will put it on the website for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Going in now. It's going in now. So, yeah, just copy the link. Ready? Yeah, it's done. Good. So, thank you for taking the time to learn how you can replace your salary when you manage a two-bed flat as a mini hotel without buying a house, without buying any furniture, without having to do the cleaning or changing a bed. A complete system. So, if you have any unanswered questions, please let me know. This is my office number. Give us a ring. But I'd rather you email to me with the questions. So, please... Email me. Have we got any more questions that have come through? Yeah, Christian has just emailed me. He said he can't see the link on the slides. So uh, if anybody wants to email me, wayne at hmodaddy.com, I will send you by return 
uh, the links that you need to, uh, to, to, to to get the bonuses and the booking form. I mean, you can email myself because Wayne deals with all my emails. So if you didn't catch Wayne or you don't know how to spell it, just uh, email Jim HMO Daddy, and we will pick it up and we'll give you the bookings. I've just posted the link to the um, tonight's slides into the questions box. So again, all you've got to do is copy that um, into the browser, and then you could go. Fantastic. Uh, are we done the questions? Um, there's one more. Do you want to do a, a cover why service apartments rather than stay in a hotel? Perhaps I should uh, have a quick word. Yeah, let's hear from Wayne. Wayne's been looking after the technology for us, but Wayne uh, was the one who did most of the experimentation with uh, service accommodation. Uh, so he was the one who set it up, did it. Uh, so it's an opportunity to, uh, to talk to him uh, about it. Wayne is uh, not known for working hard. <laughs> is that um, a fair comment? Yeah, I like to have an easy life. But um, And was it running service accommodation for me, doing that trial oh, was, that hard? That was a real, really, yeah, it took at least a half an hour a day of my time. So uh, I, I needed to move on to something a bit less uh, strenuous. strenuous. <laughs> so uh, while I was doing this, this, the testing, I took the uh, opportunity to, to use a couple of service accommodation, and I thought I'd explain why... Uh, they worked as a visitor. Uh, we did a couple of exhibitions down at XL, which is in uh, East London, and hotels around here, there, I don't know if you're uh, familiar with that sort of neck of the woods, but they can be in the region of £200 a night for, uh, yeah, you'll get a nice hotel, but it's very expensive, or you can stay up in Barking, and you'll end up in a travel lodge for about £50 a night. So the last time we went down there, that was the choices. There were three of us. A uh, bit of shopping around on Airbnb, and we found a ninth floor penthouse on the uh, Olympic Park Village. Um, two bedrooms, and one of us slept in the lounge, and that came in at uh, 300 pounds for two nights. So, you know, that was the right pricing for one person. That was still a bargain, but for three of us, then it was a fantastically uh, priced uh, opportunity to stay where we wanted to stay have a, a full-blown kitchen where we could cook rather than having to eat in the hotel uh, rooms. Um, so that worked really well. And then also for a bit of a change, the previous time I went down there, I stayed in a, another penthouse um, with a guy who turned out to be the uh, theatre critic for one of the London papers. £100,000 worth of antiques in his flat. I felt like a little mouse tip tippering around there. And that cost me £200 per night. But what a fantastic experience. Um, I need to run a few more uh, HMOs and service apartments to generate enough income for me to buy one of those. But uh, as a one-off, again, I'm not a big fan of hotels. It's uh, you know thousands of people trampling around, a little bit of individuality, a bit of a change, overlooking the Thames barrier. Um, so, yeah, learn some good lessons from that for our own. Um, and that's basically what people are looking for is it's got to be priced right, but it also that little bit of individuality and a bit of a pers um, independence uh, was, was fantastic as it, when compared to the hotel. So um, I think that was me really done. Has anybody got any quick questions for me? Let me just check the inbox. But if not, you can always catch me, uh, Wayne at HMO Daddy, um, or by phone. I usually answer the phones here because I'm that keen not to work. I'd rather answer the phones and talk to people all day long. So I hope you've all had a good night. Um, I'll pass you back to Jim. Thanks, Wayne, for that. Uh, yes, uh, service accommodation, as I say, it's catching where the hotels make a gap. Hotels provide rooms and a service. Uh, you'll find people tire of that. They want their own apartments without uh, having uh, maids coming in. They want to be able to cook uh, and share with their friends uh, accommodation, their own privacy. It's a home from home. That's really the, the summation of it. And you get some straight, uh, amazing service accommodation properties. So I think it's time to say uh, good night from Wayne. And is it good night from you, Roland? It's good night from me, yeah. Thanks everybody for attending tonight. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's online training. Thank you. And it's good night from me. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Take care. Sleep tight. Night night. Good night, everybody.